Welcome to the Posh Sessions. I am your host, Posh. And I swear to God, I'm trying to get better at releasing these episodes out. I swear I'm working on it. Just getting back from New York. It was the Husby's birthday weekend and I had a lot of fun catching up with him and my family. And while I was up there, I just so happened to overhear some real fire music. And that's all I'm really able to say about it. But I'm super excited for everyone to hear when it finally comes out. Anyways, conference finals are here. And I got my brother with me today. Hi, Chucky. Hey, Pie. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Now, hold up. Where the fuck is the energy from like yesterday? Uh, uh, don't give listen, me this shit, I'm, nigga. I'm this is just... not what I brought you here okay, for. Okay, so what do you bring me here for? So, to talk to me. Okay, I'm Conference talking to finals. You. Okay. Who you got? I mean, what, right now it's Golden State and, and, and Toronto. What do you mean? Okay, but who you think got it? Uh, I mean, it's hard. I'm an underdog guy. So, obviously, you want, you want Kawhi to do well. Right. But, I mean, the fucking history says that if, you know, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson... They're the guys right now. So until a motherfucker beat them, then that's, I mean, that's who you got to roll with. The smart money says Golden State right now. Golden State. How many games do you think this is going to go for? Right now, I mean, KD ain't even playing. It's like right. everybody, it's like they're playing better. So, you know, they always talk about next man up. And Draymond has got his confidence back. I mean, them two little red bones, as I call them, they doing their thing. So... <laughs> It's going to be very, very hard for Toronto to beat them. And I will say this. I think Coach Nick Nurse is doing a hell of a job, but it's a difference between game planning from one person to game planning for three people right. or four people. Like, we ain't even talking about Iguodala yet. We're just talking about two just red bones and exactly. Draymond. So I'll say five games. Right now, I'll say five games go to state. I like it. I would say six. I'm still saying Golden State, but I would say six games. Well, not six games. I think, no, I'm going I'm to stay with that. I'm going to say five games if they like, don't you, play. Well, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say five games swept. if they don't play with KD. If they play with KD, I'm going to say six games it's because gonna it's going to take them a minute to get, them, to get the chemistry back. Chemistry means a lot. Yeah. This is a tough series. I wanted for it to be the Bucks, but at the same time, I'm not mad. I would have, I would have liked to see it be the Bucks because I think the Bucks would have been a better matchup just from a size standpoint. Those guys are so big, but since the Bucks aren't there, I mean, again, this makes the NBA very, very interesting right. because at the end of the year, you got Kawhi gonna have to make a decision. You know about the turmoil and all the dysfunction that's going on in L.A. So you got a lot of players that's getting ready to change teams. And a lot of it is going to be based on what happens in the finals. Do you think Kevin Durant is going anywhere? Um, I can't speak for Kevin Durant. I think that where he is right now is fitting. But a lot of it is going to depend on, again, what happens in the finals. I want him to go to the Knicks. I, th I think a lot of people want him to go to the Knicks. I think the NBA would love for him to go to the Knicks because it makes it gives the, NBA, us some hope. Jesus the NBA, Christ, the NBA, the NBA, like anything else, is polar. Like you can't have the North Pole being super heavy and the South Pole being empty. Right now, that's kind of what we got. Like yeah. the LA Lakers got LeBron. Who the Knicks got? But the NBA is going to always revolve around those two because guess what? The hottest market on the East Coast is what? It's New, New York. York. The, hottest coast, the hottest point on the West Coast is what? The Lakers. LA. So when you have the Lakers, being, the, the, the Lakers being strong and the Knicks being strong, the NBA in, is, is way better and more and, and it's interesting. Entertaining. It's entertaining. Well, right now it's like, okay, the Lakers are, are 
Let's keep it real. They're trash right now. <laughs> and the Knicks right now is what? They're super, super trash, shitty. man. Okay, so. Lord, I've seen what you've done for others. Okay, so let's keep it real. So they have to do something. I mean, I would love to see so, him so, go. So just imagine this. Just imagine KD and Kyrie in New York with, say, an Anthony Davis. See, what I'm mad about is I got Botox and I can't move my fucking forehead, but I'm excited okay. inside. Okay. <laughs> and just imagine if you got Kawhi and LeBron in the over West. Here. So you got Kawhi and LeBron over here with, who, with Jimmy Butler. Just give him Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, right? And then you may have Kawhi, Kyrie, KD, and AD in New York. Can you imagine what that'll be like in the finals? KD, would we have Jimmy a Butler, chance to make it and to Kawhi. the finals? Absolutely. You, what you mean? Like, first of all, you got Kyrie Leonard, who is arguably the best point guard in the league. Bro, I know. You got KD, but who, could pop, who is New arguably York, is the best sad. player in the league right now. And just imagine them teaming up with any other person. I'm just throwing AD out there, hopefully. But if it's not AD, just imagine they got anybody else but, but those guys with with LeBron and whoever is he get, Kimball Walker. Like, it's going to be, it, it'll be. And despite all of that, even if you got these guys going over here in the East and you got these guys going over in the West, you still got Clay and Steph. Right. On the West Coast that could arguably beat anybody anyways. So yeah. you still got to deal with them. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. And you, when you were in the league. Right. Can we talk about it? Yeah, let's talk about it a little bit. What made you get into basketball? How I got into basketball was, I guess, coming out the womb. My mom was married to a basketball player, or is was married as with a basketball player, and everybody on my dad's side are basketball fanatics. Like even the women played. So, yeah. a lot of times when you go to family picnics or family <laughs> gatherings, especially everything on his side, revolves everything revolves around basketball. basketball. And you know, like I said, my dad was a basketball player. Uh, when my mom married my dad, my dad was in college, so I was able to experience college with my father as a basketball player. So, That's you awesome. know, that was intriguing to me. And then as I started hanging around, I mean, anything that you, you know, you're, we're products of our environment. So whatever we are around all the time, that's kind of what we are. Yeah. I was always around basketball. So that's what I became in. I could be at my Auntie Laverne house on Fourth of July, on Memorial Day, she cooking, and guess what's on the what's guess what's on TV? Basketball. basketball. I know. And it leads from watching the basketball game to actually she Going had a basketball, basketball goal around her property. So it goes from watching the game to I think you who somebody think they're the best, and now we got to figure out who is going to be. <laughs> so you got to go outside and play gotta go, basketball. You got to play, and then as you lose, you know you got all your cousins. Talking you ain't shit. shit. You bust your ass. Exactly. She broke so, your ankles. So guess what? That that for me. Fuck that. I, next time I'm not gonna be the worst, so I'm gonna go practice. And as it you start getting more and more involved, you start your hunger becomes greater because you wanna be the best. And that's how kind of thing kinda happened. It kinda it's it's a, it's a revolving, it's a it's a it's baby steps to it. Talk to me about how the fuck you ended up on so many different teams. Like, you started in Orlando. From there you went... Was it the Nuggets? No, I went to Detroit. From there you went... To Boston. To... Washington. (laughs) To... The Lakers. To... To... Was it the Suns? No. I went back. No, we're going to start all over again. I went from Orlando. <laughs> I went from Orlando to Detroit. From Detroit to Boston. Mm-hmm. From Boston to L.A. From L.A. to Washington. From Washington to Memphis. From Memphis to Denver. From Denver to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City back to Detroit. 
your son? Like, why did that happen? Like, what was uh, all well, the back and forth and well, the shifting about? Well, in the NBA, commodities are always dealt. You know what I'm saying? One thing I always look at is the fact that people always say certain things, but you can't be traded if nobody wants you. Okay? So, obviously, I was a commodity a lot of times because I've always contributed to winning in every situation I've been to. Here goes but, the Leo in him. He's going to talk shit But now. I will say this. A lot of times, your life's purpose is a lot bigger than where you are. I, at that particular time, at that particular time, I thought it was just about basketball because that's what I was doing at that time. But now, based on what I'm doing now, mm-hmm. it, I realize that it wasn't about basketball. All right. I'm going to take you on a whole different tour. All right. And I want you to listen to me. I started basketball. I started playing basketball as a basketball player. Okay. But forget about the basketball. Let's talk about the coaches that I played for. All right, throughout my NBA career, okay? I started off with Doc Rivers, who right now is arguably one of the best coaches that's coaching the game, okay? I left from playing for Doc Rivers, going to Detroit. I played for a guy by the name of George Irvine, who really didn't care about coaching at the time, all right? But I went from George Irvine to Rick Carlisle, who won a championship, with the Dallas Mavericks, all right? Doc Rivers coached me, was a rookie coach of the year. He left there. I was one of his biggest advocates to go to, to, go to, to, go to Boston. He won a championship in Boston. Rick Carlisle coached me when I was in the Pistons at his first. So Doc Rivers' coach, first coaching job was with me. Mm-hmm. Rick Carlisle's first coaching job was, was with me. Job? Those two both won NBA championships, okay? I left from, I went from Orlando to Detroit, from Detroit to Boston. All right. So when I left Boston, I went to Boston, right? And uh, the coach had quit. I played for another coach, right? As soon as I left Boston, Doc Rivers came in. I went to the Lakers. The Lakers was coming off a championship season. I played for, I had the, I had the honor in playing for Rudy Tomjanovich. Rudy Tomjanovich won a championship two times with the Houston Rockets. So my first four years, five years in the NBA, I played for Doc Rivers who won a championship, Rick Carlisle who ended up winning the championship, Rudy Tomjanovich who won two championships, right? I went to the Lakers, left the Lakers, ended up going to Washington, playing for Eddie Jordan, who at that time was probably the hottest coach in the NBA. I learned something from him, okay? Things didn't necessarily work out because I was playing behind an awesome guy, one of the hottest guards in the league at that time, in Gilbert Arenas. You played with a lot. I played, yeah, I mean, anytime niggas. you played with, yeah. So that's even better. Right. Because, again, at that particular time, I thought it was about basketball, basketball for me. But looking back on my career, based on the coaches that I've played for, and now that I'm a coach myself, right? how, how can I think it would be any, anything else? I've learned from the best. My coaches in the NBA, Doc Rivers, basically Rick Carlisle. I didn't even want to talk about before I left before I left Detroit when I went to Washington I played for Larry Brown that's the year they won the championship so I forgot I left uh, 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 up until this time I left him out so I played for Doc Rivers Rick Carlisle Larry Brown who ended up winning the championship that year that's three championship coaches I played for right. in my first few years in the NBA I ended up continuing play for Rudy Tom Jonovich, another championship coach that I played for right okay Went there. Eddie Jordan was a coach of mine. I played for Mike Fratello, who was one of the best coaches that ever coached for the Atlanta Hawks. Okay, he was my coach in Memphis. All right, who actually was the coach of Doc Rivers. Uh, 
I've, I've, I've was up under Scott Brooks at that particular time that he was coaching in Oklahoma City. He's one of the top coaches. So throughout my career, I've played for some of the best coaches that have ever coached in the NBA. Period. Bar none, it's, it's not even up for debate. debate. But again, when, when I was playing, I thought it was about playing. Now that I look back on it, it was about the journey that I took. So when you ask me, how, how did a guy like me play for as many teams as I played? You felt it like was, it was all it building was, up and leading was, up to this? Exactly. So God puts you through certain things right. so that when you get to the test, you pass it. Well, you mentioned a lot of coaches that you played for. You also had, like, you also had the opportunity to play alongside some of the best of the best in basketball history. Yeah. Who were some of your favorite ones like if you had to look back you'd be like I really enjoy playing with him or there was something that me and this person did I got it's, it's levels to it okay alright so you don't got a front for me cause I've already been around your basketball friends right. and I know who you know it's, so it's, you it's, know it's, it's levels to <laughs> it and what I say is this when it came down to winning and it's all about us going in here and, 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 and imposing our will on these guys and it ain't no selfishness and nobody cares. Right. The best players I ever played with is I'm going to go in my order. Ben Wallace, number one. Chauncey Billups. I knew he was going to come up as one of the first ones. Richard Hamilton. And Deuces. Tayshaun Prince. Them was going to always be my four guys to where we did and we shared a lot with each other. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, there was never no jealousy because everybody just wanted to do the same thing and that was the win. Right. I, a lot of people say certain things about my man with the afro, the no-fly zone, <laughs> but that's one of the baddest <laughs> motherfuckers I ever played with. All right. And that motherfucker number one, who played the same position as me. He's Mr. Calm, Mr. Cool. I'm talking about the whole world could be on fire around this motherfucker and he ain't never, his demeanor gonna be the same and he ain't never thinking that he gonna come out my, on, the, on the losing end. So I don't have nothing but the utmost respect for those guys. All right. Um, as far as talent wise, and, and hard work, the baddest motherfucker I ever been around was number 24 slash number eight from the Lakers, and that's Kobe Bean Bryant. Because I was a guy who brought, was brought up on hard work. I'm not very talented. I'm not the fastest guy. I'm not the highest jumping guy. Matter of fact, I never dunked a basketball in my life. How many NBA players can say that? But I mean, I broke your ankles a couple of weeks ago, but anyway. Right. But you ain't the fastest. Talented wise, <laughs> talent wise, he's the most talented guy I've ever been around. And what people don't know about him is the fact that he's probably a better person than he is a basketball player. But he's out in LA to where everything is magnified, so people try to put him in a certain situation, but he's a better individual than he is a basketball player. Um, after Kobe individually, I would probably say it was either KD or Paul Pierce. Like I played with Paul Pierce when he was in Boston, and he was intriguing to me because he wasn't the most athletic, but probably out of all the guys that I've been around, he probably got the most out of what he was given. And then Kevin Durant and Russell was just like, you Those didn't guys like, even mention Allen Iverson. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean. You know that that's what people really want to hear. I'm just saying. AI, I have to in there. Fuck it. AI is, is, is he's. He's like going to say no more, wild shit, bro. No, like, <laughs> he, no, first of all, that's my brother. Okay, good. So I ain't going to say nothing negative about him, but I'm saying. You got a 5'11", six-foot guy that was doing the things that he was doing at that time. It's just like, it wasn't, it wasn't 
something that you was used to. But at the same time, from a winning standpoint, we really only seen AI be AI in 2000. In 2000. So he don't get to just do it like he should. Like he's a great individual talent, but it will I would love to have seen AI being built around like a Steph Curry is today. Like just imagine if you had Steph Curry, you had AI, Kobe, uh, Ray Allen, and all those guys on one team. With the rules of where they are today. Like oh, I will say no. this. The only guy Jesus the Christ. only guy that I, I swear that in today's game would probably average 50, 60 points is AI. I like Steph Curry. He shoots the ball very, very well. He's probably the best shooter we've ever seen. But based on the rules, it would be c- crazy to see AI today in a game where you couldn't touch him. That's what was, I'm saying. Like, that's way out of, that like... That should be bananas. Right. But... He wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> A lot of people wouldn't know what to do. I had to guard that motherfucker. <laughs> just imagine what they would be thinking. Just imagine what people would be saying today if they were able to, like, see AI in today's game. Right. But it's the same thing that we said before. Timing is everything. Right. So AI's purpose was to show these young boys now today how to do things. And that dude changed the whole culture of basketball. Yes, he did. Like, he had... Niggas, like, it was cool to just wear braids and (laughs) do his thing. Not one fuck given. That was his whole demeanor, his whole swag. And for a fight, but people don't really understand how small AI is. Like, oh, yeah, he's six foot six one. No, he's not. He's a bit of 5'11, probably 145 pounds. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's a little dude, but. Wildin'. Animal. A fucking animal. animal. So how was the money when you finally got that first check in the NBA? Like, what was one of the first things that you did? Honestly, the first thing I did? Mm Mm-hmm. So when I was a young kid, Mm -hmm. we used to always have to drive by 1792 to get to the places that we used to go. And on 1792, if you know it, there's there's a there's a Mercedes Benz dealership on the right when you go through Maitland. Yeah. And me and my dad used to go by there every day. Taking my time. Why? Cause. Yo, I don't like this energy, Chucky. This is not what we talked about yesterday, sir. Oh, we talked yesterday. <laughs> All right. I don't even remember that. What was I at when you talked to me? What was I at? You were was there? I there? Yeah, you were there. Uh, wow. You need my ice? No. Yeah, I need some ice. Absolutely. I need some ice. All right. So, yeah, what were we saying? Well, so, when first, I was younger, so when I was you younger, when, you so when I was younger, I used to always go by this little Mercedes Benz dealership. And I used to go to practice and I would come back and we would always stop by the Mercedes Benz dealership. What were you looking look at? at we, it was a Mercedes Benz, so we're looking at cars, different cars. Of course, but which one you had your I, eye I, on? I, I just looked at all of them because I, at that particular time, I didn't know the difference between an A class. Gotcha. C so you class. was just like it's Benz. I was just like, oh, Mercedes Benz, right? So I always wanted a Mercedes Benz. I always wanted one. So I can remember. I can remember when I played overseas. They gave me a check, and I came home and I bought a BMW, right? So. I'm getting ready to, I just signed my, I had just played with the Magic for a year and I had just signed my contract. They sent me a check to my house. It was like $300,000. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. Check comes in. I'm, I run straight to the Mercedes-Benz dealership. And they had this blue CL55. It was navy blue with tan leather interior. And I went there and I was like, yo, I want that car. And the dude that was running the dealership was like, yeah, you can have every car in here, but that one. Why? And and Well, what happened was they had ordered the car for a guy that had, he had just, I think he was just out of Sanford or Lake Manly or someplace. He had just got drafted. He was a young kid and he had ordered the car. Oh, damn. So he was like, you can have every car in here, but that one. 
And I was like, man, look. <laughs> that ain't really what I came in here for. That's a CL. I came in here for an S-Class. So tell you what. I want a white S-Class with tan leather interior. Do, 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 do. And he was like, all right, what you going to do this? And I was like, what, what, what are you going to do? I said, man, listen, man, I don't. I said, this is my first big purchase. I don't know what to do. So he he was like, give me your name, give me your number, give me a da 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 and I'm going to run your credit, da 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 Well, I had never made a big purchase before. Right. So, so, you, so I didn't have no credit. Right. So when he ran everything, he was like, listen, you can order a car, but you got to do this, you got to do that, and you don't have no credit. Well, at that particular time, my ego kicked in. Of course. And I was like, man, fuck all of that. I said, what I do is I buy this motherfucker out cash. I get and do the check. It was like, when this motherfucker drop, I want it. I want that car right there. I don't give a fuck what I got to do to get it. Worst purchase I ever made in my life. <laughs> Why? Because. I mean, this, aside the fact that. Because it was. At that particular time, I didn't know the value of anything. So, anytime you buy a brand new car, it's been, you drive it off the off the lot. You that's the it. Car it depreciates. depreciates in value. I bought the car in cash. That shit total. It, I ain't have no nothing. Eighty thousand dollars. Boom. Worst thing I ever did in my life. But you was like, no, I was dumb. <laughs> no, you. I mean, I'm not was, saying it like that, but I'm just saying like you. I, I'm saying it. I was dumb. <laughs> you had the first. You not gonna talk about that? I was dumb. You had the furs. Every time we went to what was it, Dragon Room, Chucky huh. just needed like you was the most. I'm still the most. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm 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 a lot different these days. Once you figure out what life is about and you understand what's going on around you, then you conform to to that. I'm still the most. I'm still a. I'm. I'm. St yeah. I'm still all that. I know. All right. Well. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm gonna ask you flat out. What? How many bodies you think you caught during your NBA career? Throughout my NBA career, bodies. Is. It's funny that you ask that because this motherfucker is gonna give me yo. I'm just telling you. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you. I don't really know because. You can still meet different people that you've been around that you totally forget. Like it depends on it depends on where I've I was. Never had an experience where I've forgotten. But That's I, a lie in your ass. No, I know. And you know you lied. No. Okay, so no so let me so, so let me play this back. Unless I've gotten raped, but other than that. No, what I'm saying to you is this: you ain't never been in a situation where you're having such a good time. You've gotten a little bit lit. And then you just fucking around and you wake up the next day and you're like, damn, I don't remember this or that, but the shit went down. You don't remember that? You ain't never been in that situation before? I wake up in my house like, yes, I was out no, last no, no, night. No, 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 no. Just wake this up what we in gonna a do. No, no, no. whole no, 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 no. This is what we going to do. This is what we going to do. This is what we going to do. You I'm just check me about up. my shit. All right. All right. Don't you goddamn get on this motherfucker. This you what you're saying. I need you to, I need you. I know you don't know me right motherfucking now. <laughs> but... Okay, I need you to goddamn what happened? come clean. I am coming okay, clean. You I've been never in, in my life on my daughter. You tell. What? Chucky. You know something I don't know? Because no, I, don't, I don't know shit. Oh, okay, I'm asking you. Because I was saying, like, I'm just, as far as I know, listen. no, that's never happened to me. I can Six. I can tell you by name who I fucked. Whether I even that ain't wanna, what we ask. Ugh, I want to admit that I fucked them or not, but I know who I've slept with. <laughs> And how many? So well, if you tell me that down. you've forgotten some, I'm, I'm Well, just... I'm going to sit there and tell you, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know everybody I fuck with. I've been on some shit sometimes. Yeah, I might not have known who the fuck I was with. <laughs> What's the wildest shit that's happened to you on the road? The wildest shit that's ever happened to me on the road? This I mean, nigga has wanted to be political. I've met, I've, I've, right I've listen, just, the wildest shit that has ever happened to me on the road was we was hanging out one night and I had won a bunch of money gambling on the way there. And and we were all just hanging out, kicking it, and a motherfucker that I had brought back to my room ended up going through my motherfucking pockets and taking <gasps> my money. 
That's the wildest shit that I have ever Damn. encountered. Fuck, that it's a sucks. Lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. That's why I always said no rappers and no athletes, and I fucked up a time or two. But a time or two? Yeah. You love rappers and basketball players. You hear this motherfucker? Yo, this ain't like loving basketball, or loving hip hop, but it gets way. Huh? I know it's not, but I mean, you call me now. I'm interviewing your ass. Right? I'm like, wait a minute. How am I in the hot seat? Listen, anybody that I've been I know with you didn't agree with that, did you? You ain't know nothing about that. You ain't think your ass would be in the hot seat when you brought me on here, huh? Nah, I figured you so would. So let me ask you this question. What, you gonna bring up the boat situation the, again? No, 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 or? no. What's the wildest shit you've ever encountered? The wildest shit that I've ever encountered? <sighs> let me think. Um, I think the wildest shit that's ever happened to me was that I brought two girls home one time instead of one. And I had a threesome with the girls. That was it? I think that's, that's the wildest was? shit that I've done, yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yo. That ain't really that wild. I mean. That's what I'm saying. So you, like, so I'm you, pretty. So, so you, was, you, was, you was intended for them, just the one to come home. Yeah. How'd you get to do? Because her best friend wanted to come. Damn. I know. And then what? I, it was, I was trying to set up a threesome for me and my man at the time. I know you don't really want to hear this, but. No, I, do, I really want to hear it. <laughs> so I was trying to set up a threesome. And I was like, I'm a bag of girl tonight. So I went out, met this girl. She was mad pretty. I get her in the car, but then her best friend was worried that she was too intoxicated to right. do anything. and was making like a bad decision because she was drunk. So then, I don't know, her friend said... You, hang around some, you do hang around some people that have bad decisions now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Yo. You do hang around... I hate that. this nigga right now. Because there's just certain things we said we wasn't going to bring up. This bullshit. But yeah, so that's how I ended up with the best friend at my house, too. And then the dude that I was setting it up for... It was around, what, 4 o'clock in the morning? He fell asleep. Phone ringing, wasn't answering. So it ended up that's being still, the three of us. Is that still your guy? No. That's why. Why? Because he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> if he would have been up, if he would have been up, y'all would have still been together. Yo. <laughs> this is what he that's doing. Why. Yo. All right. I don't even know where to take this right now because you're really trying it. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the wildest story that's happened to you here at home at in home? Orlando? Uh, you know what? I don't really have no wild stories in Orlando because I don't really do a whole lot here because... You sure? I promise. Okay. O Orlando is just mm -hmm. home, so a lot of times you, you can't... You can't Shit, where you sleep? Well, you're not supposed to. All right. You know something I don't know? <laughs> I do, but what I'm not know? gonna say. No, go ahead. Right. We can speak mm. on it. No, no. We can, we can no, speak on no. it. No. I don't mind speaking on it. Mm mm. I'm not. You brought it up. I mean, what are you talking about? No. You know something I know? I you do, don't know. But I'm gonna tell you afterwards. Right. So let me ask you this question. I'm gonna ask you this question. Oh, oh my God. In today's society, what really does it? What really do it for you? Like, like, where are we going? Where do you think we're going? And what would you like to see done? As far as what? Like, as far as just, individuals, people. You hang out. You, you, I yeah. want people to just be better fucking people. Like, stop being so damn shitty all the time. Stop being so negative. Stop being such a... Uh, like such a victim all the time like everything is woe is me and i can't believe that this has happened to me and oh my god it's like bro for the most part you're not the first and you're probably not going to be the last to ever go through some shit so to me it's more about like figure it out and stop crying all the fucking time and just be a better fucking person i just want to see people win the I reason think that's why I, the reason why life. i asked that because it's like in society today, people are always quick to judge somebody else about what the fuck they're doing and what they're not doing. And I think that a lot of times that's a hindrance to all individuals. Um, It's a hindrance to everybody. Because how? 
whatever you do shouldn't be judged by anybody because I don't know what the fuck you're going through at the time that you're thinking about that or you're doing what you're doing. But, but it depends what you're doing. I ain't even gonna hold you for the most part. That's, I don't, and that's the point. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Yeah, no, I don't. I have questions. You do? I do. Sometimes, okay. depending on the situation. Well, you keep questioning it, I'm gonna keep living. You could do that. I mean, it don't stop my party either, but I'm just saying, when I see people do dumb shit, it makes me question, like, what the fuck? But what's dumb? What's considered dumb? That's what I'm asking you. Like, something that is not helping you grow or progress, something that's helping you regress in life, I just feel like. Okay, Why but what if that? what if what if my regression and your regression is totally different? It is. Like, I don't. Different. I'm not going through the same thing that you're going through. Right, but at the same so, time, so if you're so not what I might forward, be going through may, may may be stupid to you, but it makes totally sense to me. Eh, that depends on the situation. I think that that's very circumstantial, but not everybody. Like, okay. if you know, that's like as a parent, I have this conversation with people all the time. Right. You training JoJo right now, right? Absolutely. Okay. As a coach, you have experience, right? Absolutely. Okay. As a coach, you know the downfalls, right? I think so I, would like to, I would like to think that. So your job is to train him to avoid those pitfalls and to become the better version of him. Yeah. but Be- Why? Because you have the experience and you already know, for the most part, you have the experience and you know the right. do's and the don'ts. There's going right. to be things that you guys are going to have to figure out together, but you know. But, so but just when because it comes I to know don't mean that he's not going to still fall in those pitfalls. Right. But as a coach, your job is to want to help him avoid those pitfalls. I understand yeah. that you're not going to be able to stop him if that's right. really what he wants to do. Right. But your job is to be like, yo, you don't really have to do all of that. If you do it like this, it's going right. to work out. You're going to get what you want, and you're going to avoid all this bullshit right here. Right. So sometimes it's not a judgment thing for me. It's more like if I see somebody going down a path that maybe I've gotten over, right. and I know, yeah, this shit don't end well. You're just going to fuck yourself up right. in the long run. Right. I feel like if I weren't a good friend, if I wouldn't tell that person, yo, right. I don't really think you should but, do this. But, it's not but, a judgment thing. Again, it's more like again, you're hurting yourself in again, this process. but if you listen to what I said is, you can go to that individual and you can tell her that. Mm-hmm. You can tell her, hey, listen, I don't think that you should go down this path because I've been on this path before and this is what's going to happen. Ain't nothing good going to ha- happen out of this. But at the same time, she is going to listen to you and not do it or she may not listen to you and she's still going to venture down that same path right. and then at that particular time it's going to be like hey listen I told her but sometimes motherfucker got to go through it absolutely it's not a like I said it's not necessarily a judgmental thing I'd have questions if I feel like bro I wouldn't be a good friend a good sister a good niece a good anything if I don't see my people if I see my people's fucking up and not say something about it again you can do it you can say it they either gonna listen, they gonna hate to it. I mean, that's all my responsibility is, is to be like, yo, I peeped something, maybe you should right. this. If you do it and you you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, and you don't listen, cool, that's on you. But I told you, my job was done. Right. I can't just sit back and see my people fuck up and not say I, anything. I, 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 I agree with you 110 percent But that still don't mean that because you tell them that they gonna they gonna do the right shit. No, definitely not. Now you can feel better because you told them and you warned them, but at the end of the day, they're gonna do what they wanna do. And that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it is fine. It'll stop. I get it. It'll stop me. Right. I just did my job as a friend. All right. So what's your reason for having the show? What's because going on? I want to have intimate talks with people like you that I feel like are important and can bring perspective into today's society. Um, I want to talk about my life experiences and what I've also learned in this thing called life and parenting and relationships. Um, I love music, so I want to be able to also use this platform for music. Um, so those were my personal goals when starting the Posh okay, Sessions. Okay, so what's the hardest thing you've ever had to endure? What is the hardest thing I've ever had to endure in life or just... In, in, life. in life. My daughter passing away. That was the hardest one for me. Everything else, I mean, I wanted to kill a nigga here and there, but, I mean, it wasn't like I was going to die behind it. You want to kill a nigga? Oh, yeah. You already know my baby daddies. You've seen them before. Anyway. Uh, shit. <laughs> I'm saying. Hey, listen, please. I didn't hit none of that. I, I said I that. wanted to. I never did it. They're still alive and well somewhere. Anyway, life after the NBA. 
What does that look like for you? I know that you mentioned life initially that NBA, you were a life, coach. Life after the NBA, I think, is challenging for everybody that has ever played because when, in order for you to play in the NBA, you, you, you've you sacrificed a lot. A lot of times those guys don't understand and they may not, they may not know anything else but basketball because right. in order for you to get there, that's one of the hardest things that you can possibly do in your life is to play NBA basketball because guess what? You got to put so many hours in to where you're just so focused on that the way you're not doing anything else. Speaking of that, what the hell was your diet like when you were in the NBA? Because why y'all niggas all got the fucking lean bodies, the six packs? Like, why? Uh, well, for, for me, it was a lot different because I'm a, I'm a smaller guy. I'm not a 200-pound guy to where if I don't play basketball for a couple of days, I'm going to get fat. Like, for me, it's actually the opposite. If I go the whole summer and I don't do nothing, I'm going to lose weight. Whereas most guys, if they don't do nothing, they gain weight. Right. So I'm a small guy. So You think it's just like the routine of basketball, though? Um, no, that I might mean, make me basketball, basketball. Basketball in itself is a marathon. I mean, you're playing 100 and something games, and, and it's one of the most, it's at the highest competitive level. Right. To where, you know, you guys may be running four, five, six miles a game. So, and everybody's looking for the next edge. Everybody's looking for the edge. What's going to make them better? So, you know. Five, six miles a game? A game. And you're playing, you're playing 100 games in a year. So, you got to be prepared for all of that. Those guys, the NBA, I will say this about the NBA. We are the most athletic athletes of, of everybody, of anybody, everybody. Even football. Football, Who's basketball. I mean, football, baseball. Boxing, you know, boxers you just gotta be in, in shape for two or three months. These dudes gotta be in, in shape for Shit, twelve months. Nigga, that boxing gym you went to that one day with me, oh my god. Yeah, but again, you only in putting your body through that type of environment for I was four there months. for like ten minutes. Yeah. And when I tell you my asthma kicked in, it was oh it ain't for bad. everybody. I was like, <gasps> again, it ain't for everybody. Like trying to make it. It ain't for everybody. So no diet tips, no nothing. You just that's it. You just ran across the court, fucking no, five six miles a game. I think your diet. Everybody's different. Basketball is like everybody. Everybody's in, individually is different. Like the one thing I will say about basketball is the fact that it taught me how to be in tune with my body. So my body type may not be your body type. Might not be the next person's body type. So can my body so, type be the one with the six pack? Because a bitch is tired. It might not be. No, don't it say might not that be. To me. That's not the thing. You might to say. be. You might be the chick that that we we start playing, and then you know if you st if you don't play every day, you are gonna start getting chunky. Whereas <laughs> I might get lean. Yo, it's bullshit. So so my body type and Chauncey Billups' body type is different. But y'all still had to like work out and stuff when you guys were. He's playing. a professional, just like I'm a professional. But his body type is different from mine. If Chauncey do something and don't do nothing for a, a, a number of a number of months, guess what? He gonna start getting big booty, bad body. <laughs> I'm not that type Yo, of guy. He's actually put on some weight. I know okay, you've seen so, him on TV. Okay, so I'm not that type. You're really but not. But that don't though. mean that he's not no bad motherfucker. Because he's still a bad motherfucker. Of course, man. but oh, he's. But our you know, body types is different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you know, Al Harrington. You might have Al Harrington, Al Harrington, and you got Andre Iguodala. They play the same position, they're, but their body types is different. He's a big body guy. This guy here is going to be lean the whole time. Yeah. So now what? I got to learn my body type is essentially. Learn your body type, and then you can set your, you can set your, your, your diet accordingly because one thing that we all do is this. If you exercise... More than you eat, you're going to lose weight. <laughs> if you exercise, so I need to exercise more if you're, if you're, if the calories burnt are more than the calories you intake, you lose weight. That's one thing that we do know for a fact. This motherfucker want to be so sarcastic today. I don't even understand mm. like what this is about, but all right. All right, all right, all right. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Call it what you want. So next one up is JoJo. What would you like to see for him, coach? Mm. What would you like to see for your boys? I keep singing out JoJo because JoJo's my baby. Right. But 
I, I for w- your team? I would like this. First of all, my team is just a collaboration of kids that I like to sow into. But at the end of the day, I want to see all my kids go out and be successful in everything that they do. We're just using basketball as a vehicle to show them and train them what to do. What does basketball teach them, you think? I think basketball teaches them a lot of things as far as in today's society, you have to be responsible, accountable. You have to have talent. right? And you have to be able to work well with others. A lot of times, based on today's society, a lot of times we as parents want to see our kids be that be that superstar. We want to be the head honcho with not understanding that that position requires a lot and it's a leadership position. Mm-hmm. But people are just looking at money and they're just looking at what good things happen to us. But at the end of the day, a leader can be a person that don't make not one dollar but has an effect on the whole everything. Yeah. And that's what we're losing sight of as a society. And that's what I'm like, like, listen, my team right now, as of today, is ranked number one in the country. It's not about the ranking. The ranking is a great thing. It's about what we can accomplish. But if those kids don't understand how they got to that point, it means nothing. Yeah. How y'all get to the how y'all get to the number one ranking? Y'all get y'all got to the number one ranking from working hard and believing in each other. So teamwork. It's teamwork. Ain't no, ain't no one person. I don't care Feel who like it they're is. That nigga. They, they that dude. Because without these other guys, I can go through a whole. I can go through my whole roster and I can show it. I point out minutes throughout all them guys being together where he dominated, where this separate guy dominated, where this separate guy dominated, and that's what made us who we are. And now they're starting to believe in that, and they're starting to believe in each other. So that's what's making me feel good. I don't give a fuck about the ranking. No. Because you know, like I know, our lives continuously revolve around certain things that we've already been through in the past. Right. Okay, so when my kids get to that point, they understand, okay, I done been here before. I know what it takes to get to this next level. That's what's going to make them successful. And I'm going to feel like I don't give a fuck whether that kid go to the NBA or whether that kid don't do nothing, I'ma still be there. And whether he gets to the NBA and he be this ultra mega star, guess what? I'ma always be Coach Chuck. Period. He gonna always look at me in a certain light because I do the same thing with my coaches. I don't care how my coach, my my high school coach right now probably is my high school and my college coaches the two best coaches I feel like I've ever had, other than my father. Obviously, my right. if I'ma rank them. My daddy gonna be number one. That's who taught me everything from day one. My second best coach is my high school coach, Calvin Lingabach. My third coach is is as a uh, Bobby Pascal that coached me at USF. That's gonna be my rankings as far as my coaches. My daddy, Calvin Lingabach, and I still talk to them dudes every day. And I don't care if I was James Harden or LeBron James. I'm going to look at my high school. That's my coach. That's coach. And they ain't got nothing to do with That's coach. Hey, coach, what's up, man? I don't care if I'm the best basketball player Michael Jordan ever thought of. Coach, my kids going to think of me the same way. Coach, I don't care. I want them to go on and be all of that. But they're going to always res- know me and respect me as coach. Period. You know what I've always admired about you the fact that you do have this story to tell and that you have had this very like exciting life right but you're still chucky that's the best part of all of this because we all start from someplace but a lot of people lose sight of that you know a lot of people get to a certain level and they feel like now that maybe I've made it, you know, and they have their 15 minutes, like all of a sudden they are too good to acknowledge certain people. And the one mm-hmm. thing that I can honestly say about you is that you, to me, you are, cut, I don't, I don't cut, care about cut. the stats. I don't care about none of that. I got to pee. Cut. You know what? 
Cut. This nigga really did that right now? He Cut. really fucked up the moment? Cut. Cut. I hate him. What about That way. He messed up the moment. I don't even want to tell him all those nice things I was going to say right now. I don't even want to be nice to you no more. That's it. The moment's gone. Well, stop being nice then. I need another drink, Carol. Oh, okay. Hold on, Chuck. You know what I appreciate about you? The fact that no matter like the type of life that you've lived, you're still Chucky. Like you're still so down to earth and so humble and you're out there with the kids in the neighborhood and you just you don't forget where you come from and that's one of the most beautiful things that I can say about you. Again, I'm a product of my environment. I grew up doing the same thing that my dad did. That's how my side, that's how my dad was with me. My dad came from college, he started teaching a group of us from the neighborhood the game of basketball. So now it's only right that I've taken it to the next level. I'm a pro, but I'm actually back home doing the same thing that my dad did. I love kids. I love teaching them. I want them the same to have them. I would love for them to have the same opportunity that I had, but I can't guarantee that. But I could give them what I know, and it'll be what it is. Does your son feel like my dad is this MBA um, or he just feels like, I mean, no, I know Jojo, I think, so I think I, he's just like, yeah, I my think dad. my son gets the bad end of a lot of things because people expect him to be what I was. And you have a bunch of bad parents who always want to compare their son to my son. It could be anybody else on the team, but they always want to compare him to my son because they feel like that's the product that I'm putting out. But at mm. the end of the day, they don't understand that their son and my sons are different. Are different, and every kid and every individual has their time to shine. I know that once my son actually gets what I'm giving him, and he has the confidence in himself, that there's no kid out there that's gonna be able to stop him. And well, I know George that. has always been athletic because you had him in the bas- not basketball, in the golf courses, even at age five. Six and he'd be out right. there swinging, mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. than me. But a lot of times, again, he's a kid at the end of the day. Right. So when things don't necessarily go the way things, where he think things should go, right, he'll revert back to. Let me just be relaxed relax because I'm this guy, as opposed to if he had it the way I want him to have it, like, fuck all of that. Because I don't right. care what nobody else says. This is what I was born to do. And at the end of the day, nobody was going to have to say so in it anyways. Because right. it's going to be what it's going to be. Right. And that's kind of what I teach. Okay. Well, on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Coach Atkins. Are you going to wrap it up? Why, you want to keep going? You want to talk to me some more? What's yeah, up? Let's, let's talk. you here. I'm here. You got me here. Let's talk. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm not going to wrap it up. I uh, take that back. Ra- yeah, let's not wrap it up. You don't like it wrapped up anyways. <laughs> Neither do you. Okay? <laughs> Yo. This is really what we're doing, huh? Absolutely. That's what okay. we're doing. we here. <clears throat> Posh. Chucky. Okay. Talk. So Let's what go. else been up with you these days? Shit, man, I'm chilling, man. I'm feeling <laughs> real good. Shit. Shit, I got my I got me a I'm good. You got you what? I got my I'm good. <laughs> What's going on with you? I am fantastic. Really? Yes. So Working you went up you podcast. went up you went up, you was in New York? I was in New York. You, you was with Hubby? Yes. You married now? Don't look at her. I'm asking you a question. Uh, I'm 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 getting there. Yes. Oh, you're getting there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So y'all got nicknames like that now. We huh? do. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Do you have nicknames? No, I ain't in your relationship. No. So she's just. I'm a nasty motherfucker. I'm a nasty motherfucker. So what's her nickname? We could curse in this. I'm like in. She a bitch. She a nasty bitch. <laughs> Yo, I hate you right now. 
She's a nasty motherfucker. She's a nasty motherfucker. So what are you into sexually these days? How old are you? I'm 44. I'd be 45 in August. I was on point. I said, I was like, he's like 44, 45. I'm 44. I'll be 45 in August. August and, 14th. And your shit still work? Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm very confident. That's good to know. So is that like an athlete thing or just a 44-year-old thing? I'm not. I'm no longer an athlete, so I'm gonna say it's a 44 year old thing. You're an athlete, man. I gotta shut up. No, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm, a, I'm not an athlete. I don't do nothing athletic no more. I've. You're be at the gym. I was just. I know that, but you, what did you see me do at the gym? You was running around with my. You son. ain't see me do no fucking running at all. You was running with. You see me walking around. Oh my god, Tato. All right, whatever. Mm -hmm. So what so are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing these days? These days, I'm really not having a whole lot of sex Why? because I be busy. Oh, come on, time to fuck out. I hate this. So listen, mm -hmm. you you a sexy Latina. <laughs> Cha 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 cha. Yo, I hope you're getting his face right okay, now so because listen, this is crazy. You a sexy Latina. Mm -hmm. And you ain't having no sex? Not like that. That's what y'all that's that's what y'all normal. It's not, but I'm busy and I'm tired. Oh, you that busy? I am. Yeah, you tired, huh? You yeah, you tired. You, like I turn to say it. Yeah. <laughs> you about the tiredest <laughs> motherfucker I ever made in my life. Yo, listen, I work, I see the kids, this podcast has taken over my entire life. Really? Yes. Hmm, okay. What we need to do? We need to get you back on point then. Huh. Who is the flight connect So I could be flying around to New York Why to we need to connect Germany, To all of that And you Latina What do you want me to do Fly to New York every weekend Yeah No Absolutely not Alright Okay Uh uh No I got shit to do here What you doing I work, I have my kids, I have this podcast, I have my furniture company, I'm a property manager. Like, you forgot now? Oh, I mean, you, you're doing a whole lot of good shit. Okay, then. You know I mean? So that's just it. All right. Okay. But I'm glad you're living your life as a 44-year-old and your dick still get hard. That's amazing. I'm feeling, listen, I'm living my best life right now. I'm, 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 I don't have nothing to... To to grab about you know my 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 uh, I mean I don't have nothing to grab about you no know, I I wish I would could see my I wish I would see my girls more that's the only thing that but they're like in school yeah but I still wish I would see them more but other than that I mean they left that's the my, nest. That's my. Well, that's, not they technically haven't though. They're just in college. I'm sure they're gonna be around this summer. Yeah, but being around, being around and not be being there for them all the time is the only thing that maybe I wish I would do better. Other than that, I'm good. You know, I, I'm I'm living. I really really like where I'm at right now in my life, like. Being around these kids and teaching them and and taking them to a level that maybe they don't think they could they could be with, you know. A lot of times you sacrifice for somebody else's kids and want them to be better, but at the end of the day, it's a sacrifice for you and your kids because you don't be able to be there for them. Right. And that's the only thing that I wish that I could do better. That's it. The balancing of the family. The balance life of the, with the yeah, career. absolutely. Absolutely. It's hard. Absolutely. It's hard. Sometimes you do have to sacrifice certain things in order for things and, to be a certain way. I, I see, mean, you I, can't do it all. And, and I see my girls, and I see them maturing. I see them, their and bodies changing. And I see a lot of stuff. And then when you want to chime in on on what you see them going through, a lot of times if you ain't been there, they ain't going to listen. Mm. And that's it. But other than that, I, I love my life where I'm at right now. And and I'll die today for any of these kids. I don't give a damn because they're the future. I'd have my day. I'm cool. And it ain't going to change. But Kids. Auntie Carol, you 
can come around and hang around more and be seen more. We got podcasts. We got kids that can be on the podcast. We got. I'm not against got all, any got, of we that. We got. We got all of that. That My Auntie Carol. Number. That Auntie Carol could be involved in. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uncle Chucky. My number is still the same. You could text me and you'd be like, "Yo, I need you to be here, and I'm gonna make that happen." That's never changed, ever, and that will never change. All right. Well. Let's see. Let's do it. You good now? Uh, you still want to talk or not? No, I appreciate you having me on your on your <laughs> session. Posh sessions. It's gonna be the realest session y'all probably ever see. This nigga just called out my entire relationship. I thank God this shit is not live because oh my god. I don't care nothing about that. <laughs> Well, I don't care nothing about none of that. It's real. We got it on tape. Now what? That's that's true. It's definitely real. What did we say wrong? What about your relationship? What did anybody say wrong about your relationship? We're gonna have a conversation about that after we're done here. What sir. did anybody Thank you say? So much. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome being, so much. For being a guest. Thank you. Chucky Atkins, you still everyone. Like, <laughs> and shout out to Novelty Of course shout out to the greatest Audio engineer ever Lemmy Curry And we have photos by Lex Behind the camera And don't forget June 8th Tacos, tequila and trivia Here at Novelty Doors open at 6 Don't be late guys Because I really want to show uh, Like start my show on time And there's going to be A dessert table Sponsored by Barb's Cakes We're going to have tacos We're going to have tequila For the first 50 people You guys get to take shots with me And we're going to have a good time I'm excited So Till next time Peace